A new concept in four-wheel drive produced by the makers of the famous Jeep, the world's most useful vehicle. Yes, forward control, a completely new style of four-wheel drive. Traction and maneuverability are needed here, and you get all three with this new Jeep vehicle. Its four-wheel drive makes it easy to go even where roads do not exist. Wheel drive traction enables you to drive with ease and confidence through mud and over soft ground whenever necessary. Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel, Greg's Restorations. Uh, this is a video we have been working on for well over four years. Uh, this vehicle came into the shop in uh, 2017. Uh, this is a project shipped up from Alabama. The customer, Jeff, bought this vehicle off of eBay. Um, it, it was a uh, sight to see, actually, once we got it. It showed up with uh, no tires and wheels on the front of it. Uh, we had to drag it off the trailer. It didn't run, didn't steer, doors wouldn't open. It was virtually just a really rusted shell. Frame was really solid on it, which was a good point, but the body needed a lot of work. It had been sitting in a, a field in northern Alabama for a long, long time. So when we when we received the truck from uh, the shipping company, it actually had the tree still in between the brush guard and the truck itself. One of the cool patina things on this truck is it has tree care written on the side of it and as well as a radio tower vehicle. So this truck was used for many different purposes after it was done by the military. These trucks originally were built for the Marines and the Navy. There was only about 400 of these trucks made. They're, they're based off of a FC-170. The FC series uh, was was launched to civilian use in the, in the late 50s, I believe 1957. But they made two different models. They made an FC-150, it was a, more of like a half ton, shorter wheelbase, they had a, a wide track and an hour narrow track. And then they also had a FC-170 that was like a three quarter ton and one ton trucks. Uh, they were pretty heavy duty, a lot of construction companies had them, buses, campers, ambulances, anything you could imagine, the FC platform uh, had it. They were had them for about a 10 year run. The cool thing about this truck is the paint on it. It has a rusted peeling paint kind of patina. This paint has been making its own since it was new. It's got probably, you know, three different paint jobs on it. And a lot of it was because it was never really prepped good enough. So it's peeling off and stuff like that, which gives it kind of a unique green and brown and rusted look. Originally this vehicle had a 2.8 liter, three cylinder, two stroke supercharged, diesel engine in it. It was made by uh, Surlist. It was 85 horsepower. Uh, did not have a lot of power. Um, it did not really want to go out of its own way. And when we got the vehicle, somebody had ended up swapping in a 300 cubic inch Ford Great 6 engine in it with an automatic transmission. I believe they were out of a Ford Maverick from the 70s. We tried to trace the numbers back on the block. Um, we ended up getting it running, but we wanted to do something a little different with it, so we got rid of that engine, and it was just kind of before we installed all the engine mounts that were done had to be cut out. Thrown in there on a, on a Friday night with some buddies, so it had to be taken out. The power plant in this truck right now is a four liter out of a 2000 Jeep Cherokee. Uh, so what we ended up doing was we did some research and trying to figure out like what to kind of do with this truck. Uh, we wanted to have modern axles, modern brakes, uh, disc brakes, modern power with an automatic transmission, just to be able to drive this thing like you would in modern society. Ended up finding a 2000 Jeep Cherokee on Facebook Marketplace. It was out by Boston and bringing the donor vehicle back to our shop. We did all the service work on it before we took it apart took the axles out of it, took the engine, took the transmission, took the wire and harness out of it. Anything that we thought we would need, we would take it out of the vehicle. We actually put uh, some of the front suspension in it as well. So uh, this has virtually got a Jeep Jeep drivetrain in it, you know, kind of keep it its, in its own family. One of the cool things about this thing is it does have electric power steering. If you look down on the, sh on the, on the steering column, you'll see there's a uh, electric assist motor, which helps steer this thing 
just because it's got 35 inch tires and it's it's a big truck rolling down the road it's actually once you get used to driving it it's actually pretty fun this was the first day of me actually driving it uh, we've done you know some small test drives around the shop making it run better making it drive better it actually leaves for las vegas tomorrow so we had to do this this video shoot today because it's going to be on a, a moving truck car carrier heading to vegas uh, tomorrow morning we ended up using the original steering column in this truck so there was not a shifter arm on that so we ended up using the bnm shifter here originally it had a small radiator mounted up in front of the truck well with the size of the engine and the horsepower and everything that this truck is putting out now we had to upgrade the cooling system so we ended up adding the radiator in the bed with an aluminum radiator in the bed we built a nice cage around it to hide everything and protect it if you ever had to put anything in the bed dual electric fans on that as well to keep this thing cool because the engine is mounted inside this box underneath us we actually had to add a um, recirculating fan inside the engine bay of this truck as well just to keep this engine running as cool as possible I actually got the idea of off of a FJ 62 Land Cruiser that we worked on previously when the engine shuts off in those trucks they have a cooling fan that turns on to keep the intake manifold from getting too hot so when you shut an engine off the coolant does not circulate anymore and the engine actually gets hotter so we wanted to try to keep this truck running as cool as possible. Nice little thing too is you can actually uh, open this little, these little compartments up and check, uh, you know, check if there's anything going on in your engine bay. You can actually hear the, the circulating fan going, keeping everything cool. Um, but you should be able to um, change oil right through these two compartments. These are actually the factory um, service doors that were originally used. So we restored them and put them back on the truck. One of the hardest parts on this truck was the body, making patch panels and trying to preserve the patina that was on there because we didn't want to, we didn't want to ruin the paint. So we had to do it and dissect this truck in a certain way to not wreck everything. You know, you could grind it all off and just do, you know, welding, but everything had to be done. Everything had to be TIG welded. Everything had to be fabricated off of, you know, some stuff wasn't even left. So we had to take parts off of other doors from the parts trucks to make make panels and make floorboards and the bed on this truck was pretty solid which is a good thing we had to modify the tailgate a little bit because it was rotted at the bottom so when what didn't really want to open it shut these m677s were actually two cabs welded together there is actually a seam where they join the two roof skins together and if you actually look at the side of these trucks the front and rear doors are identical so to save money they just welded two trucks together all the glass is brand new in this truck brand new windshield brand new cut side glass brand new side glass brand new rear window the only thing we didn't change was these vent windows because they're very tricky to take apart and it kind of you know shows the original appearance of this truck you know so when you look at a couple things on it you'll still see the paint and the green from you know stuff it you know don't really take away too much from its past so what we did was we, we got rid of the lease spring suspension in the front and we did a custom free link suspension with coils. We were using the Cherokee axles as well, so using the front suspension with modifying some parts to make everything work. In the rear we, keep, we kept it leaf sprung, spring over on the axle because we needed the lift for it. We needed something that would go in between the frame rails because the how the axle and everything was configured. We ended up doing uh, FJ40 springs, hangers, and shackles, and all the fact suspension components because we have a lot of those parts, and everything worked out great. So the shocks in this truck are a uh, period correct nitrogen charged Rancho shock front and rear in this. It does have a Fox steer and stabilizer in the front. We needed something to help with bump steer on it. So this uh, truck is equipped with Dana axles front and rear with disc brakes in the front just to give it a little bit better of stop and power. Copper coated brake lines throughout the whole truck. They're kind of a nice subtle touch to the truck. A lot of people use stainless but stainless is really hard to bend so we ended up using this copper coated line throughout the whole truck with we use stainless steel flexible hoses. One of the hard features of this truck is we had to mount a remote reservoir brake system in it with a remote brake booster setup that runs off a vacuum. This cab over setup is virtually nowhere to mount a brake booster, so we had to mount it underneath the truck. During the restoration, we ended up taking the body 
off of the chassis and then sending out the frame and running gear to be sandblasted. We got the frame back. We ended up doing a light skim coat of filler on it just to get rid of some pits and stuff like that. And then we used a single stage black paint that we got from Sherman Williams. All the products on this truck were uh, Sherman Williams automotive paint. Um, we used a single stage paint on the inside, a uh, single stage satin black on all of the frame, suspension, and drivetrain components. This gold CAD bolt finish on everything underneath just to give it a nice clean look under the underside of the truck. Underside of the cab, we did something a little different. We did a period correct asphalt rubberized undercoating. So the original electrical system on this truck was 24 volt, just because that's how the military had them built. You switch this back over to a regular 12 volt system, put a brand new painless wiring harness in the truck. It originally came with night vision lights on it. So when you were convoying, you would throw the, the night lights on or cat eyes, however everybody wants to call them. So we converted them all over to actually the turn signals and brake lights. We modified the front bumper to have a winch receiver on it. So we put a worn, 8274 winch on it with a synthetic rope. So we ended up uh, getting a winch plate from Warren and modifying the front bumper for everything to work. So a huge shout out to Warren winches. Uh, they ended up donating the winch to this truck for us just because the costs of going out to SEMA and all that stuff, you know, get very expensive. So it was nice to have a couple vendors help us out with the build on this truck. The interior on this truck as well, we didn't want to keep the patina in here because, you know, as you're driving, we didn't want to have, you know, flake and paint and stuff coming in your eyes as you're driving down. So we ended up sending this truck up to our good friends up at Hard Color Powder Coating. They're up in New Hampshire. And they ended up sandblasting the whole inside of this truck for us. We ended up doing body work and filler work on it. And then we epoxy primed and doing a single stage military green paint, similar to what was on here originally. get into the inside of this truck it's like brand new same as the underside of this truck you look under this truck everything looks brand new everything was sandblasted and coated in brand new hardware but we left the exterior of this truck you know in its original state it's actually really nice i didn't know if i was going to like the center console but it's actually really comfortable to sit in it's uh really really nice everything about it um it's a little tight in the driver compartment but it's it's manageable so the nice little armrest we got here from Kaiser Willys. So we ended up uh, wrapping that in the distressed leather as well. All the handles were restored in paint and satin black. They were very pitted. You cannot buy these new. So between all uh, between all the trucks and the two parts trucks I had, I ended up having four handles and four uh, window knobs. So we ended up sandblasting them, body working them, and painting them. We did not have a original rear seat. There was nothing in the truck when we got it. So I have a uh, 2014 Ford Raptor and I really like the back seat of that truck so we measured us measured the seat off of that because we didn't have anything to work with the original seat was gone in this so we ended up taking that uh, cutting the base down because we need a little more leg room backs a little tight on on the driver's side so and then we had it we had it uh, covered in a distressed brown leather front seats are original the only thing that's different is we did an adjustable passenger side seat because they did not they did not adjust so we took another uh, another driver's seat out of another parts truck that we have the dash is a little different than factory we actually made half of the dash custom because the dashes on these trucks are very short so we ended up making it because you know we wanted to have a glove box we wanted to have some modern features in it Another feature we added to this was we did autometer gauges. We did a autometer speedometer, tachometer with their oil gauge, oil pressure gauge, water temp gauge, and fuel gauge as well. We got a lot of parts from this truck from Crown Automotive. They are based out of Massachusetts as well, which is kind of cool. Uh, they're down on the Cape. And then we did a lot of products from uh, Kaiser Willys and Summit Racing and all that stuff. Um, this, this truck is kind of morphed from like 10 different vehicles into one. The sound system in this truck, it's a 32 inch of Boss Audio, a waterproof outdoor speaker. Hiding that under the rear seat, and then we paired it with a set of marine grade pods off the, off the rack. So you can actually have music playing inside the truck and playing outside the truck if you're camping or hanging out with friends, tailgating. You can do whatever you want with this vehicle. 
The seatbelts were uh, custom made by Seatbelt Planet. We called them up actually a week ago and asked them for, for getting the seatbelts and they kind of laughed like, but they ended up getting them done for us because this is a SEMA build and they're actually going to be at SEMA as well. Uh, great company. They turned around the seatbelts in about a week for us. Soundproof this whole truck to, to reduce the noise in it. We were very worried about listening to the sound of you know the engine while you're driving and it's actually very quiet. Dynamat makes um, some really good products that we added to the engine bay of this truck that's soundproof and fireproof and then we use the regular Dynamat on everything else on the roof and the sides of the truck so when you're driving this thing there's virtually no rattles no creaks it's really sound and the product really works so I highly recommend it. We also added Raptor Liner tinted green floor bed liner to this truck as well because you're going to be using this truck you know in off-road applications and you know you know you're going to use it as a truck so you know this coating is very durable it's scratch resistant um, and we tinted it the body color of the inside of this truck green it goes really nice off of the brown distressed leather it gives it a nice contrast look so we got three colors going in here we got black the satin brown the suede and the green so it's uh it's got We've got some nice touches to it. Tires on this truck are a BF Goodrich Mud Terrain. They're a 285-70R18. What I like about the tire is they're a good on-road tire with a off-road appearance and they are great also off-road. They have a nice rugged look and they drive down the road really nice and not too loud. They are mounted on 18-inch Detroit steel wheels with a dog dish center cap. We kept this, the wheels raw steel because of the outside appearance is, you know, kind of rustic and stuff like that. So we ended up just scuffing the wheels down and putting a clear coat over them to try to preserve the natural steel look as much as possible. So we ended up retrofitting some period correct Jeep emblems to the center caps of this wheel to kind of give it its own unique look. That's what brings this whole truck together is all the little subtle features of this thing to make it its own unique vehicle. Another thing we did on this truck is, you know, the overland craze is kind of big right now. So we ended up wanting to add a bed rack to the back of this with a three person pop-up tent on the rack itself. So the bed rack in this truck is from Overland Access. We had to get something to get the tent off of the bed a little bit to give room for uh, the radiators mounted in the bed so we wanted a little depth so this truck can uh, breathe freely and have you know air flow so it was virtually the perfect dimension that they needed it's designed for a small pickup truck and then we had to build some of our own mounting brackets to mount into the original stake body on this truck if jeff wants to take the rack off this truck all you gotta do is unbolt it and drive around without it we haven't posted a lot about the vehicle because uh, we were trying to keep it under the radar and when we launched the truck we wanted to just kind of blow everybody away so we're going to be taking this vehicle out to SEMA 2022. Um, SEMA has been kind of a goal of mine for about 10 years. I don't know the exact amount of hours we had in this but if I had to predict we would have over 3,500 hours into this vehicle. Uh, we did not work on this truck straight every single day just because we needed sometimes a break and it was sometimes hard to get parts. But we've been working on this truck for close to five years. Uh, the truck came into our shop in 2017 and uh, some of the guys are just joking at the shop that like they came in, you know, the truck was here before they even started working. It's been a placeholder at the shop. It's been only really kind of like a shop icon for a long time. And a lot of people love this truck. A lot of people have been following this truck. So we're going to kind of do a nice debut at SEMA 2022 with it this year. Um, knock it out of the park. Check out our other Toyota restoration builds. You can also check us out on the web at our new website, Greg's Toyota Restorations.com.